So in Isaiah 53, verse 4, surely he has borne our griefs, carried our sorrows. Now that's our sicknesses and diseases. In the Hebrew, it's, it's the actual words, but they didn't translate them accurately in this sense. Uh, verse 5, he was wounded for our transgressions. He for our. So everything he did, everything he, he went through, we get the benefit of, so we don't have to experience it any longer. And it says, and the, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Then in verse 6, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Our iniquity, our iniquity was put on him. Verse 7, he was oppressed. What does that mean? So you don't have to be. Everybody Jesus healed was oppressed of the devil. Why did he do that? Because it was going to be put on him, and it's not right that we're oppressed. He was afflicted. Yep, why? So we don't have to be. Yet he opened not his mouth. Now, see, that's where we ought to be like him. And we're not sometimes, all right? Romans chapter 6, verse 4, Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. He said, if you were buried with him. Now that's it's referring to the actuality of what happens when you get baptized in water in the sense that you're being baptized into Christ. It's a, it's a representation of it because you can go in a wet center and come out a wet center. But if you go in and you're recognizing that you are buried with him, when you come out, you are supposed to walk like him in newness of life, a different life. However you lived before, you should be living different after that. Right? For if we have been planted together, now notice he said we've been planted like a seed being planted in the earth. If we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man, who we used to be, is crucified with him. That the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he lives unto God. All this is referencing to us how we are supposed to reckon ourselves. He even says it right there in verse 11. Likewise, in the same way, reckon you also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Too many people have not reckoned themselves dead to sin and everything. Because what's that, what falls in the category of sin? Sin, sickness, disease, poverty, lack, hurt, pain, oppression, all these things. We, you have to reckon yourself dead to these, to, to that whole category and alive unto God. Why? Because if you're alive unto God, where is sickness and disease? Where is all this stuff that most Christians live in? It's because we have not reckoned ourselves dead to that. So when you reckon yourself dead to it, it means you no longer participate in it. It means it has nothing to do with your life. He says here, In verse 12, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. When he says sin, he says that you should obey it in the lust thereof. When he says sin, he's not talking about just acts of sin. He's talking about the sin principle, the sin nature. He's talking about everything to do with sin. He's talking about everything that came from sin, which means sickness, disease, all that stuff. It all, it is all, conclu all included there. We were with him when he was raised from the dead because in Ephesians 2, uh, chapter 2, verse 5, it says, even when we were dead in sins, he hath quickened us together with Christ by grace, are you saved, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. This is why we have to think on things above and not on things of this earth. Why? Because that's where you are. And when you think there and you're seated there and you reckon yourself dead to this thing, now to sin and all of its, uh, everything that goes with it, at that point now you start living a heavenly life on earth. And his will is being done on earth as it is in heaven in your life. 
And when your life is that, you become a light and you draw people to that. And they go, what is, how do you do this? How do you, how do you live free from sickness? How, how do you live with all the inflation stuff? How do you still uh, live like nothing's happening? And you tell them, it's because of this. Why? Because I don't live here. I'm seated there. I go by that. I think on that. And I don't let that that's in the world in me because what is in me is greater than what's in the world, which means that what's in me can keep the world out. Why? Because there's a stronger one now in me than who used to be in me. Amen? Amen.